President Donald Trump is bypassing the nation's elected lawmakers as he claims the authority to defer payroll taxes and extend an expired unemployment benefit. AP's Ben Thomas reports. Democrats are obstructing all of it. Therefore, I'm taking executive action. We've had it. Questioning Democrats' love of country, President Trump positioned himself as a savior for American workers. At a news conference at his New Jersey golf club Saturday afternoon, he signed an executive order extending the supplemental federal unemployment benefit for those who've lost their jobs. An extra $400 per week in expanded benefits. Asked later about the amount being one-third less than the $600 people have been receiving. It's not a hardship. This is the money that they need. Another order would defer the employee portion of the payroll tax from August 1st to the end of the year. Senator Ron Wyden, an Oregon Democrat, described that as a fake tax cut. Ben Thomas, Washington. Protests continued in the streets of Beirut Saturday night after a day of demonstrations over Tuesday's devastating explosion that killed nearly 160 people and injured almost 6,000. Police fired tear gas at stone-throwing protesters, and some demonstrators stormed the foreign ministry building during Saturday's protests. Aya Mazoub is a human rights researcher who told Britain Sky News that people are furious that government officials knew that more than 2,700 tons of explosive material was being stored in Beirut's port. There hasn't been a single apology There have been barely any resignations and none amongst high-level officials. The disaster has increased public anger in a country already reeling from an economic crisis and the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. At least nine people were killed and nearly 20 others injured Saturday in a car bomb blast at the front gate of a Somali military base in Mogadishu. Government security officials contacted by VOA have confirmed that eight of those killed were government soldiers and other casualties included members of the soldiers' families who were at the base at the time. Hospital sources have confirmed that around 20 wounded people, mainly soldiers, were injured in the blast. Al-Shabaab militants have claimed responsibility for Saturday's explosion, claiming they killed dozens of government soldiers. Tens of thousands of motorcycle enthusiasts have gathered in Sturgis, South Dakota this weekend, As AP's Julie Walker reports, there seems to be little concern about the coronavirus outbreak among those gathered. Biker Kevin Lunsman rode 600 miles from Minnesota and says he's not wearing a mask and was surprised at how many showed up this year. Bikes are still lined up in town, people still walking all over. Occasionally, you know, you see somebody, there's a lady sitting over there with a mask on, but that's about it. Everybody's still partying hardy. But the coronavirus has changed some things, says Bob Graham, who's marking his 36th straight year. There's less people. Uh, There's not as many masks as I thought there would be. We, when we walk up and down the streets, we wear our masks religiously. Sturgis organizers say 250,000 could show up. I'm Julie Walker. Travelers arriving in Germany from most non-European Union countries and some regions within the bloc that have high numbers of coronavirus cases will have to undergo compulsory testing from Saturday. Frankfurt's airport test center, which is being run by Centogene, has been prepared for the mandatory testing. The tests for people entering from so-called high-risk regions are free for the first three days after arrival, Travelers from those countries already have to self-quarantine for 14 days or until they can present a negative test. German authorities are concerned about the rising number of coronavirus cases in the country. A Venezuelan court sentenced two former U.S. soldiers to 20 years in prison for their role in a failed incursion aimed at ousting President Nicolas Maduro in early May. Chief Prosecutor Tariq Saab said late Friday that former Green Berets Luke Denman and Aaron Berry had admitted to participating in the May 4th operation. Denman and Berry were charged with conspiracy, terrorism, and illegal weapons trafficking. The sea incursion launched from Colombia, known as Operation Gideon, left at least eight people dead. 